Today we're at Cleghorn, and this is going to be an overview of the entire trail. We're going to talk about every offshoot, every hard spot, every easy spot, so you can have an idea of uh, how difficult or how easy the trail is. Despite what the internet trolls will tell you, Cleghorn is not just a fire road. Actually, technically, it is a fire road or a forest, forestry service route, 2N47 to be exact. Normally, you run it from or the normal way of running it is from Interstate 15 eastward. Uh, it's about 15 miles long and it ends out right next to Silverwood Lake on Highway 138. There's also a place you can start it in the middle, also off of 138, that cuts off several miles of uh, running on the dirt road before there's any difficult spots. Some people also run it backwards from the Silverwood Lake side on 138 from the east uh, westerly down to the 15 freeway. You could do it either way. Some people say it's harder if you run it backwards from the Silverwood Lake side. I'm not sure that's correct. There are some difficult spots that are easier when you're going one direction, but they might be harder in another direction. Generally, if you're running it from the Interstate 15 side, everything is uphill. And generally, when you're running it from the Silverwood Lake side, 138 side, everything is downhill. So some stuff is easier if you run it backwards, some stuff is harder if you run it backwards. One of the great things about Cleghorn is that it is technically a fire road and the road is relatively flat and easy the entire way through from end to end. So you could probably get a streetcar through it. You could definitely get any stock Jeep, any uh, truck through it with no problems if you stay on the fire road. On the fire road, there's a couple of uh, sort of steep areas, uh, a couple of sort of rocky, bumpy areas. But again, depending on how recently they've graded the road, you could probably get a, a street car through. Of course, every time it rains, it gets a little more rutted up and beat up. But because it is a Forest Service route, they do maintain it and it's normally in pretty good condition. Now, when you're on the fire road, uh, after you get up the first uh, couple of miles from Interstate 15, you'll start to see the offshoots. And the offshoots are what makes the trail fun for four buying. Most of these offshoots are just a couple of hundred yards long. They veer off of the fire road and usually meet back up within a, a few hundred yards. I think the longest one is about a mile where it's off of the main trail for a mile or so. The offshoots always meet up back with the fire road. The great thing is, is that on almost all of those offshoots, you can take a look at it before you decide to go up so you can decide if you uh, want to do it or not. If it looks too difficult, you just stay on the fire road and go to the next one. There are a few sections where the fire road hits a, a split or a Y or you have a choice of going one way or the other and you can't necessarily see how difficult it is up ahead. And if you make the wrong choice on one of those left or right turns and you're not prepared for it, you could be in for a, a bad day because there are some sections that are what I call moderately difficult, a beginner might call extremely difficult, that you cannot back out of. So we're going to show you where those spots are so that you can be sure you always make the right turn or left turn and uh, not get stuck somewhere you may not want to be. If you plan on staying on the fire road, there's no need to air down or disconnect. Like I said, this is a decently maintained dirt road. You may want to air down just to smooth it out a little, but you don't need to. Definitely don't need to disconnect. If you're going to plan on taking some of the optional offshoots, the difficult spots, it is a very good idea to disconnect because there are some extremely off camber areas, uh, places where you're going to need all the flex you can get. So disconnecting is definitely recommended if you're going to take the rough spots. Airing down is also recommended. Not particularly necessary because there's not a lot of rocks you're going to be crawling over but again airing down is going to smooth the ride keep you from bouncing around as much so anytime we go up and do the hard spots we always air down and disconnect the first obstacle or offshoot is technically no longer an offshoot this is a closed section you can see there's fencing there although uh, the fencing is brand new from uh, 2016 it has been mysteriously torn down and uh, poles removed and bent, uh, but this is closed. You're not allowed to go up here. You could do all of the offshoots on Cleghorn with no lockers. I think I've done them all either before I had my locker. The Nata Rubicon has only one 
locker in the rear. I think I've done all the offshoots without a locker. You could do it. Uh, a lot of Jeeps do it, no problem without lockers. Uh, they are a uh, locker or lockers are helpful in a couple of the spots, uh, especially if it's muddy or uh, been snowing. If there's been any rain on Cleghorn, uh, if it's wet at all, the soil up here is very slick. I would not run Cleghorn uh, if it had just rained or in the rain, because I've seen people slip and slide and get out of control. If it's snowy, I don't even like coming up the fire road when it's snowy or icy, uh, because you've got the uh, drop-offs and uh, it's just slick and slippery. So on a dry day, you could easily do the, all the offshoots, or not easily, but you could do all the offshoots with no lockers. Uh, if it's muddy at all, a locker would be real helpful, and uh, I would just plain stay away if it's snowing or uh, muddy. But a lot of people do it, just depends on your comfort level. Uh, I don't like sliding around, so uh, I'm not as comfortable in the mud or snow. A couple of miles in, about a mile or so past Edison Hill, you're going to come to the first Y in the road. And uh, like the sign says, you want to stay to the right. That keeps you on 2N47. That keeps you on the Cleghorn Trail. If you go off to the left, you will be on 3N22, which is a mile or two long. Uh, it's pretty much flat road again, unless it, well, it's not flat. There's some hills, but it's graded and maintained dirt road. Uh, that goes out to Highway 138 uh, to the, uh, I forget the name of it, but there's a staging area, a little off-road staging area uh, that, that I mentioned that you could come in from and start, uh, basically if you, you could come in from there and uh, start the trail this way as well. So 3N22 to the left, 2N47 Cleghorn stays to the right. Right here behind me is the first real little offshoot, a little practice hill, a little bunny hill. Uh, good for the noobs to play on and uh, make sure you're in four low and everything is working. It just goes right up and over and it's got a kind of a blind uh, right hand turn at the top, but it's really short up and over. And right back there, probably 30 yards long. Okay, we're at the first real obstacle now and this is quite an intimidating obstacle especially for the beginners it goes up uh, runs along the ridge right above the fire road goes uh, maybe a quarter mile or so before it meets back up with the fire road it's pretty steep there's some gnarly ruts up there uh, definitely need to get up there and four low and nice and slow but very rutted out you could do it without a locker, but if it's wet or slippery, definitely a uh, locker would help. If you don't like the way it looks, just stay on the fire road. And it meets back up, like I said, in a quarter mile or so. All right, right after that first hill, after you come up, it comes along. The road meets up right there. Fire road continues on to the right. You get to the second hill, which is similar to that first one, not quite as rutted. Actually, it's quite a bit easier. You got to be careful because the fire road does kind of drop off into the abyss right here. So watch your left. Harder to the left, fire road to the right. Continue along the ridge with the fire road right there to the right below us. You hit another hill. Uh, it's about like the one that we just went up. Uh, it's a little bit steeper, a little bit more rutted, but I don't think as bad as that first one. So here we go.
piece of cake. I don't even think I slipped the tire and it's a little bit wet today. Climbing the hill, we meet back up with the fire road on the right. Fire road continues around to the right, nice and flat. Are we going to do any hard stuff today? <laughs> and uh, another offshoot right up to the left. Just like the last two hills, a little bit rutted. Just kind of straddle the ruts. Piece of cake. It's a couple hundred yards long. Back on the fire road now and uh, back in two wheel drive. It's a little bit of a distance to the next hill. Fire road's a little bit rutted out, but not too bad. We're filming this on a uh, Thursday and uh, just had one Jeep come down uh, and pass us coming down the opposite direction. That's another great thing about Cleghorn is it's so freeway close that uh, there's always somebody up here. So. I wouldn't recommend that you come up here alone unless you're sticking to the fire road, but if you should happen to come up and uh, get stuck or have trouble, you've got cell service almost the entire way and there's almost always somebody else on the trail for help. Okay, we were on the fire road for, I don't know, about a mile or so and there's another split. We've got an offshoot to the left. I'm kind of surprised there are many puddles are still left up here and uh, fire road to the right, offshoot to the left, fire road to the right. This is a small, short offshoot. It's very easy, it's just a little hill. You go right over it. Uh, probably gonna do it in two wheel drive. That's what I'm gonna do. See how easy it is in two wheel drive. Yeah, not much of a hill at all. Right after that little hill, the road splits again. This time the fire road goes to the left and the offshoot goes up and to the right. This is another rutted hill, a uh, little bit intimidating. It's a little steep, very rutted, uh, but relatively short. Meets back up with the fire road after uh, I think a few hundred yards. bit rutted, piece of cake, nice and slow, great practice for a beginner. And we're coming up on Three Wheel Hill. All right, we're now at Three Wheel Hill. Uh, the fire road comes in from the left. Uh, we just came through the difficult spot, so we're coming in from what would be the right of the fire road. Three Wheel Hill is straight ahead, and then you probably can't see it, but the fire road stays to the right, and it's real obvious, fire road is flat. Three Wheel Hill is an offshoot and is a little bit bumpier. Uh, there's two ways up. You can go up on the right, which is a bit smoother. If you go up on the left, the ruts are really long and deep and you will get on three wheels. Your front tire almost certainly will come up in the air, especially if you don't have a lot of flex. So uh, Dave is going to hit it first. I'm going to follow right behind him. And we'll see how it goes. Now poor Dave here, he's in a stick shift and has got a stock transfer case, not a Rubicon transfer case and 321 gears. So he's got to go like 20 miles an hour up this thing. I can crawl up it at two miles an hour. Oop, oh, he's spinning the tires. Ah, he made it. I'm paying more attention to him than the trail. Oh, he's 
spinning tires again. Bounced a little. You can hear the Jeep creaking and groaning. When you get up to the top, you got to make a sharp, almost blind right turn. If you go to the left, it's a dead end up there. No, go right if you can, otherwise you have to go up there and turn around. Not too far, you don't want to fall off the edge. Like I said, a bit of a blind turn up here with some deep ruts in it. Probably not the best way for me to be going. Alright, turns around to the right, right back down to the fire road. Now when you see that next little hill, there's two ways up. If you go to the, to the right, it's really steep there, uh, or you can go to the left, it's not as steep, uh, it's a little rutted. Uh, which one are you going to do? Because I want to get video of it. Uh, whichever one's tougher. Windy today. So I'm going to try to show you how steep it is. Doesn't look that steep, but trust me, when you're in that front seat and you're staring at the blue sky, it does feel steeper. But as you can see, it was no problem at all. Now Mark's going to give it a go. Ooh, he went really far right. Got some blue sky, but barely spin the wheel. Joins back up to the road uh, after just uh, probably less than 100 yards. And we're up to the next hill, which is steep and rutted like all of them, but not too difficult. Go ahead, Dave, I'll follow you. Straight up, I usually stay to the right side. I think that left side's a little too off camberish uh, at the top. All right, on this one, just like with all of them, or most of them, fire road to the right, flat and easy, offshoot, straight ahead to the leftish. We're going to stay to the right. At the top up there, at the left, it gets a little off camber. You don't want to get your tires in that rut. That would be a bit more of a challenge. Top of the little hill. It goes uh, for another 100 yards or so. Oh, damn it! A little bit of mud if it's been raining. Go to the uh, left here. And we're back on the fire road, back in two-wheel drive. As we get to the top of the ridge, it's getting colder and windier. It was uh, almost warm at the bottom of the hill by the freeway, but when we started, it's getting much cooler up here at the top. And a lot windier. Uh, we went from zero wind to probably steady 10 15 mile an hour with uh, stronger gusts, and that's generally how it is up here, especially in winter time. If you come up in summer, it's often windy, but at least it's warm. So if you come up in winter, even if it's uh, warm down below, bring a jacket. All right, we're at the next uh, little hill. Again, another steep, slightly uh, rutted hill. And the road here stays to the right, but the road is a little steep and a little bumpy here. It's one of the rougher spots of the fire road, so it might be hard to tell. But it is uh, fire road to the right, offshoot to the left, and uh, they meet back up in just a few hundred yards, just like all the rest. Again, Dave here in front of me is climbing all these hills in a stick shift with 321 gears, which is, makes it very difficult. It means he's got to keep rolling pretty fast. He's got no lockers, and so far today he's barely spun a tire. I think we're going to change that by the end of the trail, but as you can see, 
Uh, he's got a little bit of lift, a little bit of bigger tires. He's not stock, but no lockers, and he's having no trouble at all. And a stick shift to make it more complicated, just like the Nata Rubicon. There's a little bit of a rocky spot to get over as you come down, but nothing major. If you uh, like to be more adventurous, you go on the right, otherwise you can kind of go around them on the left. Now we're at the next uh, little hill. Again, another steep, slightly uh, rutted hill. And the road here stays to the right, but the road is a little steep and a little bumpy here. It's one of the rougher spots of the fire road, so it might be hard to tell but it is a uh, fire road to the right, offshoot to the left, and uh, yeah, they meet actually. back up in just a few hundred yards, just like all the rest. Not much worse than the others, but that rut was pretty deep, and if you put your wheel in it, you will get onto your side, just like that other guy did. Made it up that no problem. Puts us up uh, the top of the ridge. Here we come down a little bit rough area. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little. A little bit bumpy coming down. But it's still a piece of cake. After several hundred yards, we will come right back out onto the uh, road. We're going to make a left. There's another closed spot directly ahead. Can't get up there anymore. Used to be another fun section. We're going to take the fire road to the left. Are now at the shoot. The shoot is one of the more fun, more famous spots on Cleghorn. It is very long, a couple of hundred yards long. It is very narrow. It is very deep, high walled, very steep, very intimidating if you're uh, new to four wheeling, a little bit intimidating if you've been four wheeling for a while. Uh, it's easier usually to come down than it is if you're coming in the op opposite direction to go up. Uh, you have to ride your wheels right along the walls. Uh, the wall will be just a few inches from your window and you'll need to pull in your driver's side mirror if you're going down. You'll want to pull in your passenger side mirror if you're going up. Definitely pull that mirror in or you will scratch it. And here we go. Dave is going first. 
I'm going to follow a little closer behind than I would normally recommend just so you have a good view. Normally you want to give good distance to the guy in front of you. He's getting a little sideways there. There's a little more rutted out right here than usual. Definitely getting sideways. There's Mark giving us moral support. And we are right against the wall. My tires are just rubbing right against it. Dave is coming up on the first little ledge. Second if you're going up, first if you're coming down, which isn't set that bad. see how sideways he is there and how close he is to the to the wall there now here's some video looking right out my driver's side window and you can't tell perhaps but and I'm far away but the wall is just out of my reach when we get closer here I'd be able to touch it there's Dave A little high on the wall, a little sideways. My driver's side mirror is about two inches from the wall, one inch from the wall. Coming down the first ledge, nice and slow. A little sideways, not a problem. Coming up on the second ledge, Dave is just now going over it. Slow, slower. It's coming down on the right side of that big rock, which is what I try to do. I don't hear any crunching. Sounds like he cleared it no problem. I didn't hear any banging, so you did good. All right, now we're coming up. On the same thing, gonna put my tire up on that big rock on the right, and we're gonna see what happens. See if we do as good as he did. Coming down. All right, Dave's already down. I'm dragging on the last spot right now. Come on down. All right, so I drug a little on those rocks, on that rock. Rear end's coming down now. I gotta go slow, slower. All right, piece of cake. So my rails were dragging there. Now right here is where you may have seen the video of the yellow Jeep roll. Right about here, or just a little in front of me. We still haven't figured out what he did. We think he was showing off to his woman in the Jeep and got real high up the uh, wall and flopped over. It's the only explanation, but after that ledge, it's all uh, downhill. Okay, when you're ready, sir. Okay, boys, cloud coming down. And we just, the road met up uh, on my left, and we've got fire road for another little ways, and another beautiful view. Thank you.